Hey, welcome back to the booth. This is what I want to talk about today. The new OLED display on the Synthstrom Deluge, or Deluge. If you followed any of my videos, you'll probably know that I was not really loving the old display on the Deluge. So little information available at one time. So when they offered this upgrade to an OLED, I was there in seconds. I think it's brilliant. How did it turn out? It's great. It's sharp. It's bright. I love it. A couple of things I'm not nuts about. It's so small. Now, I realize they just had to replace the old display, so they were really limited in real estate there. But the text on it is really small, and I'm old, I got bad eyes, and it's a bit of a problem. I found the exact same thing with my ASM Hydrosynth. Fair bit of information available, but it was so small and hard to read. Anyway, they've done a great job. It displays a lot more information. If the names don't fit within the characters of the display, it scrolls like the old one did, but much easier to read. Really great overall, especially for programming in that you can see the settings of all the parameters of the synthesizers. For the names of patches, it's not that important, but when you get into looking through a library of sounds that you have inside here to start programming, quite often they have long descriptive names it was real bitch before. Um, so much better. Really excellent. Uh, for programming, being able to see more information at once is a godsend. So much quicker. So let's take a look a little closer at exactly what you get to see looking at the new display. So I'm going to start with a wide shot here so that you can see what happens on the display when I address different parameters here. Um, I've got the settings quite dark here because I want you to see how clear this display is. So what you do uh, on the Deluge, if you, if you have a Deluge, you know you just hit the shift button and then you hit various parameters. And you can see that display is updating constantly depending on what parameters I go to. Some of these are numeric. Some of these are a sliding bar. Very clear indication whether you're into the negative or the positive of the setting. As you can see, we've got a nice clear display. Now, when you're programming and not just using the front panel, you could normally go in here. Here's your standard settings. Now, this is where it gets a little trickier because when you select one of these settings by depressing this encoder, it takes you to a deeper menu, and then by hitting this button, you can go back. Now, one of the issues with this is it doesn't tell you how far you're into this. So once again, I'm resolution. I hit this to go back one level. And hit that again to go back one level to these settings here. I think it would be really helpful uh, if when you hit this and you go to a deeper level, there'd be some indication like somewhere up here or something on the screen to tell you how many levels down you are in the menu. Otherwise, you can see it displays everything very clearly here. Here's the first problem I got to when I got this back. As I go up here, I get to this OP1, OP2, and the whole menu is locked up. You see, I'm halfway through the alphabet. Well, M is, I guess, halfway. I can't, no matter how far I scroll forward, now finally it's advanced, but it locked up there. It got stuck. Not sure exactly what that's about. So you can see even a longer name. It displays the whole thing. Same thing. Now, if I go and look at a kit, There's a name that is a little longer than the amount of characters, and you see it scrolls back and forth. On these kits, as soon as I hit one of the buttons to indicate one of the samples within this drum kit, in smaller text, it displays the name of that sample. So that's just within the kit. When we go back to a setting where we can play notes, 
As soon as you play a note, it displays the note that you're playing. Which, that's fine. Uh, to me, having it display right in the middle there is not ideal. Because immediately you lose some of your content there. Not the best. But way better than what we had before. If I'm editing a parameter while I'm playing, it no longer shows me the note I'm playing, it just shows me the settings that I'm affecting, which is great, actually. Because most often when you're looking at parameters like this, you're programming. So I find that placement a little frustrating. Now to me the ideal thing would have been, um, and maybe it's possible or maybe it might be possible in future firmware updates, that we could actually set some parameters for this display, either a timeout or Maybe you could disable this, this indicator of what notes you're playing. That would be a really great feature to just be able to customize how this display works um, depending on what your preferences are. So you get to read all this stuff, but as soon as you start playing the deluge, it's gone. And if I pull wider again, you'll see if I play some notes... So you'll notice that when you make any kind of sequence or do any programming, um, the display does not indicate what note you're playing like it does here. Here it gives you the note number. So very useful. Of course, something else. Now, of course, if you're editing things like uh, multi-samples, ranges and stuff, very useful to be able to see everything so clearly. If I'm looking through sounds and I want to go in here, every time I click on this, it'll open another folder. And you can see I've got dozens of folders. And a lot of these uh, have within them dozens of samples. So uh, very, very useful for that. Looking through these folders, click on one to open that folder, and then there's a bunch of other folders in there, as you can see. And then if I hit on one of those, it'll open another bunch of things. Click here to go back. But uh, as you can see, it's a lot of information being displayed that you couldn't see before. Uh, this is so much better. as a folder and then within that folder I click on it a bunch of different sounds artist folder you can see their names all very clearly click on one and it'll show you the folders within that click on that it'll show you the samples within that folder and audition each one look at how that how great that is to be able to see all those names just miles better and once again I can't get past this preset OP 1.2 keep scrolling forward it's all locked up somehow once in a while there you go it's moved forward 
as you can imagine, uh, having this amount of information on the display when you're doing things like creating loops within a sample or start times or anything like that, it's invaluable to have this detailed information. Really excellent. That's my overview. I hope you got something useful out of it. What I would have liked to have seen as an option is a much larger display that could be plugged in externally that gives you lots of information at once. It would make the synthesizer so much more useful. You think about gear like the Electron line and you know, like the, the Digitac and the Syntac and everything. Their displays are showing you like 10 parameters at once. This thing is still showing you one parameter at once. So it's a little frustrating and limited. I understand they couldn't do much about that. But I would have paid money to have an external display that you could plug in somehow just for when you're doing deep programming and stuff. Or make it so you could plug in an external monitor of some sort and display a whole bunch of parameters at once. Okay, that's my wish list. Not going to happen, probably, but you never know. Synthstrom is awesome. They keep upgrading this thing with firmware upgrades and now a physical upgrade and making it better and better. And I think they're an awesome company and I think the product is awesome. I had to be without my deluge for a while. I'm in Canada and the company that was doing it were, they were kind of bottlenecked. They had a lot of stuff. Um, but was it worth the wait? Absolutely. Killer upgrade and I'm thrilled.